All right, good afternoon. Um, today's talk, uh, we're going to have two speakers. Um, they're gonna go by M&M. &M. Uh, actually, one of them is Matthias. You'll have to figure out which one that is. Um, they come from uh, BIDS, which is the Berkeley Institute of? Data Science. Data Science, okay. Um, and the talk is uh, Building Bridges, Not Walls. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for Thank you for being here today and caring both about Python 2 and Python 3 and how we can uh, build bridges between the two, um, two communities. And thank you for the organizers for this uh, beautiful venue and also for having uh, live captioning. Um, so uh, a bit about us. Uh, we've been working for IPython respectively for and Jupyter Project for respectively five and, and, and one year. Uh, you can find us on um, GitHub and on, um, on Twitter. Uh, we have the chance to work at uh, bids that let us uh, spend uh, our time working on almost anything as long as it helps move science forward. And uh, one of those things is actually bridging the, uh, the gap between uh, Python 2 and Python 3 to make uh, science, uh, science package easy to install and so on and so forth. Uh, and just one small slide, we have JupyterCon in August uh, in New York. If you want to come, um, we will be there. Uh, you can go to jupyterCon.com to have more information. So what this talk is not about, uh, is Python 3 or is, or is Python 2 the right choice? Uh, we're not going to decide here, the choice you make is yours, it's the right one. Uh, should you migrate to Python 3 only, again, it's your choice. Uh, we have our own thoughts about that. If you want to talk about, to us about whether you should do it or not, come and see us. But we're not going to talk about that in, um, in this talk. What this talk is about is how we migrated IPython to Python 3 only. And one of the things we really cared about was all our users, whether they're on Python 3 or Python 2 alike. Um, we want to make the transition as least frustrating for users and for devs. And uh, we're going to um, narrate you how we uh, did that uh, for the past uh, one, um, one year. Python 2, uh, 2 versus Python 3 is an example. Uh, there are a lot of uh, lessons to learn from this talk. If you're dropping support for 3.3 and going 3.4 only, this talk applies to you. If you're already a package which is Python 2 only and want to have less frustration for Python 3 users when they try to install your package and it's just blow up in uh, their terminal, this talk is also for you. Same thing if you're 2.6 and above and you want to drop 2.6 and not break for users, uh, the information that are here are uh, for you as well. Um, if you want to find more information about that, you can go on the python3statement.org website that we maintain, and we welcome your contribution. Uh, it's basically a list of all uh, uh, packages that uh, are stopping Python 2 support before 2020, and we want to warn users and tell users how um, it will affect them and give as much information. And if you're a developer, it will also tell you um, how you can prepare your package to make the transitions uh, as least frustrating as possible for your users. So we have a bunch of projects that have already uh, signed up. Um, if you see any of those, it means that by 2023, they will have dropped support for Python 2. Uh, and we have nice timelines. Uh, green is Python 2 compatible, blue is Python 3 only. Um, and what you can see, the red line is um, today, we are getting closer and closer to 2020 when it's end of life of Python 2. Um, and you see that more and more projects are moving toward Python 3 only. This is why we uh, focus this talk on the um, uh, stopping Python 2 um, compatibility. So why we started this project? It was mostly to scratch our own itch. Um, we wanted to release Python 6. Really want to write Python 3 only because we, have, we are academics and we spend a lot of time uh, maintaining Python 2. Uh, and we care about our Python 2 users. And what we want to do is if a user just use as usual the, num the command pip install IPython or even upgrade, it should install the latest version of IPython which is compatible uh, and not IPython 6 which would be Python 3 only. Uh, but the problem is that in uh, twisting 16, if you were to do that, uh, basically someone do pip install IPython upgrade, assuming IPython 6 is online. Uh, the users read something like installing IPython, doing some magic success, and then they do Python, import IPython, and then they, they have a huge stack trace that they basically read as syntax warning error, error, I don't like you. Uh, that's basically how I read things when I'm a, I'm a user that don't know about the package. Um, and so we, don't, we want absolutely to avoid this. We want um, to have a, the best experience possible. 
So let's roll back to 2016, and we thought, what are the solutions that are available um, to us? What can we do? Uh, there are, we scratch our heads for quite some time and come with not really solutions. Um, just tell all your users that are on Python 2 to pip install IPython lower than 6. Um, but then you have to teach them that they have to put quotes. They have to remember when they're on Python 3 environment not to do that. They have to remember when they're on Python 2 environment to do it correctly. They have to remember which version, et cetera, and, and so on and so forth. It's not the best solution. So we keep, keep searching. Um, moreover, users do not always read documentation. So if you just release IPython 6, it's going to break. A uh, lot of people rely on scripts, like on CI, for example. And it would mean that if we release a, a version of um, IPython that is not uh, compatible with Python 2, all the script will break, and hundreds of developers will chase us to the end of the earth with chainsaw, which we don't really like. Um, users and scripts do not read error and message, uh, error messages. Uh, I don't personally. Um, and uh, dependencies. If pa other packages are depending on you, they have to change how they express dependencies depending on which Python version they are, which we all know is really easy to do uh, because we love setup tools. We can also rename our package. Uh, that's going to be confusing and void most of the documentation on the internet. Uh, you know the XKCD, someone is wrong on the internet, I need to fix uh, their code. Um, everybody have pip install Jinja when they want Jinja too. Uh, and, of course, import name are different from package name, so it's a bit tricky to explain why you need to import SK image and pip install scikit image. So, renaming is not the best solution. It's a possible one, but nah. Um, we can also release uh, things that are wheels only. So, for pure Python package, it's okay-ish, but often uh, downstream distribution, requ like Debian, require you to publish an, an SDist, so a source distribution, a targz or a zip. Um, and wheels only allows a pure Python 2 versus Python 3 distinction. They don't have this final grain, I'm going to drop support for 3.3 or drop support for 3.4. So it's not really perfect. Um, so that's not really something we want to do. Then we say, ha, we're going to use a meta package. We're going to make as a IPython package just a shell that have um, different dependencies, whether you install it on IPython, on Python 2 or Python 3, and require uh, IPython dash real, yes, really, really this one. Uh, it's really there that the code is, um, that users don't install that directly, they just install IPython, and then they get the right thing. There are two problems that you need to re-release old code, because if you are to transform a normal package into a meta package, you're basically depending on an old version of yourself, which I don't know how, uh, pip would handle that. And if someone pip upgrade the meta package, uh, pip will not pull the dependencies. And so users say, hey, there is a new version of IPython. Let me upgrade it. Well, it's not upgraded. And then you have to go into explaining all these error messages where they install a package, but actually it's not the package you need to install and upgrade. Uh, so I don't want to deal with that either. It's uh, less, than, um, less than optimal. So we started to dig and look into uh, the code of pip, because not everything is well documented. And there is this uh, beautiful piece of code. Um, you can try to look into it. And if you squint and search carefully, you can see that the code which is used to match whether wheels needs to be installed or not is also triggered for source disk. So it's a hidden feature, not really a bug. And so if you really think about that, you realize that if you publish IPython by 3.3, by 3.4, by 3.5, by 3.6, so you release n source disks, well, each of those will only be installed on the compatible Python version. Uh, well, I don't really want to publish n source disks. It doesn't really work for Python greater than 3.9, and we open the pull request to uh, pip to say, hey, can you just make the regular expression a bit better so that it match other things. Also, it's like, oh, it's a bug. Um, with a week after, you could only upload one source disk to PyPI. So this solution is now impossible. OK, uh, just like, OK, let's keep, keep digging. And uh, as Raymond Tenchinger would say, if you've seen some of his talks around, there must be a better way. And so we looked at some things that are um, Anyways, Python requires. So since December, which is relatively uh, 
recent. And since PIP 9 and above, and if you have setup tools 24.3 or above, in your setup.py, you can put these new things called Python requires that you can tell it, here is the Python version I'm compatible with. And now, if you use pip install of a package that does declare this, it will adhere to this uh, Python require and will not try to install this package for the Python version you're in. Do not call setup.py directly. You have to use pip install the package you want. So if you clone it, you need to, to do pip install dot. Um, in greater details, um, Python requires metadata comes from PEP 345 from 2005, which means that 11 years ago, someone cared about that. The example in the PEP are for migrating from Python 2.1 to 2.2. And but for 11, 11 years, almost nothing understood and implemented this PEP. Uh, one of the things that didn't implement anything was setup tools, and now since setup tools 24.3, setup.py do understand the Python requires keywords, so you can say, hey, I'm compatible only with this version of Python. You have to understand that this is requires both when you build the package and upload it, and when the users install it, um, for example, when they're on Linux, if wheels are not available for that platform, people will download their SDist and try to install it. So you have to make sure that your users have Python setup tools greater than 24.3. So if you have users, please tell them, please upgrade your setup tools, because nobody ever upgrades their setup tools. Second thing is you need to have pip greater than 9.1. Um, version of pip lower than pip 9 will ignore completely the required Python metadata, which means that they will download something which is Python 3 only on Python 2, so we'll run the setup.py and then it will just like break the user, um, user system. So you want also to reach to your users and tell them, hey, what you want to do is upgrade your pip. Uh, you also want to reach to your CI, but your CI usually when you send them mails, they don't, don't, don't respond, so update your script as well. And uh, so that's mostly the new way. And um, to get into uh, greater details, I'm going to leave the place to my um, colleague that um, did a lot of, of the work for you to understand. Thank you. That was great. And now I'm going to get under the hood a bit. So um, this, this is the old pep. This is where the, you have this uh, definition of requires Python. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you've all seen uh, version, uh, statement, uh, version requirement statements, so you just include that. The question is, where do you include it? Uh, how do we use this? Well, first we have to patch all the things, and uh, so the first thing that needed to change was building uh, uh, the build step. That is, in setup tools, as uh, Matthias showed you, uh, you need this Python requires argument. Um, uh, slight uh, caveat there later on if you're using other bid build tools. Um, but uh, after that, so now you've built your distribution, you're going to need to upload it somewhere. Um, where do you normally do that? You do that on PyPI or Warehouse. They're using the same underlying database, uh, uh, Postgres, and one of those, uh, one of the tables in that database, release files, will actually surface this um, so that you can uh, be able to show people the data that they need to know before they download whatever it is that they're trying to install, um, particularly showing pip, but uh, I'll get to that in a second. So uh, the pep 503 is uh, what defines the simple repository format. Um, so uh, you may have seen these before if you've ever gone there and looked at the actual uh, source code, um, but this is going to be what surfaces the requires Python information inside the data requires Python attribute. Um, this is more or less what it looks like. You can see there we have four uh, uh, pip versions that don't have anything said about this, and then you have uh, pip 9.0.1, um, and that's requiring something uh, greater than or equal to 2.6, um, and not 3.0.anything. Um, so you need to, if you have uh, pip greater than 9, then when you go to install, it's going to check this, uh, on the simple repository, if it's pulling from PyPI or anywhere, really, um, uh, if that is so set up. Um, and then it won't download it if the version of Python that you are currently working with uh, is not supported. Uh, so tying that all together, 
all of these things. It's been a lot of people's work, uh, many people who are not on this stage. Uh, it's been uh, amazing to get all the help, but all of it's happened now, so that's why all of the magic will work, so that you don't have to worry about breaking things for your users. Um, so um, additionally, yesterday, uh, PEP 5.18, and this is the caveat I was talking about before, uh, PEP 5.18, an implementation of it for, uh, for PIP was actually merged. So now, as soon as that ends up being released, um, you can use pyproject.toml um, to specify uh, build, uh, uh, build dependencies. Um, so that's going to make it much easier to use other uh, installation uh, uh, tools, uh, such as Flit um, or Twine. Um, that, uh, so th that and those two happen to be ones that I know um, are specifically following the requires Python uh, data. Uh, if you are a person that works on such a tool uh, and it also uh, follows the requires Python data, uh, please let me know because then I can give you free advertising about your alternative packaging uh, tool um, in future versions of this talk. So, um, so, but this now goes to all package maintainers. Um, please use tools and services that respect this. Um, tell people to upgrade to PIP 9 greater. Use setup tools greater than 24.2. But most of all, tell your users to upgrade PIP. Please <laughs> tell them, otherwise none of this will work. Um, so even if you have done that, though, um, there is a sort of uh, many edge cases that where all of this stuff can fall through. Um, and in that case, if you want to be nice to your users, you still have to take into account that things aren't going to work perfectly every time, um, so you need some defensive packaging practices. Um, and so uh, we've had to implement that ourselves. Uh, so those basically come down to updating your documentation, CIs, and your scripts to use pip instead of setup.py, um, or python setup.py. Uh, you need to actually keep setup.py and dunder init um, Python 2 compatible, uh, and then catch the errors early so that you can, and then you need to tell them actually what's wrong because that may not always be obvious because it's not just really that it's Python 2 uh, incompatible, but it might be that they need to update their pip. Um, and then you should really be giving people in these cases multiple line error messages. Those seem to be fairly rare, but uh, it's complicated, and so use the space uh, available to actually communicate to your users what they need to fix. So, um, so more specifically, like update all of your documentation, update all your scripts, update all your CI systems to use pip install dot. Um, don't use uh, Python setup dot py. It's ignoring P Python uh, requires Python. But then also now uh, pyproject.toml. Um, keep your setup dot py Python two compatible. If setup dot py runs at all in the in this sort of a situation, someone in Python two trying to install um, IPython six point or greater. Uh, that's probably because they have an old pip. So in that case, don't actually just say that the package is incompatible with Python 2. What you really want to do is tell them, hey, upgrade your pip because you shouldn't be in this state anyway. Um, and so this is uh, a reduced version of how it's implemented in IPython. You see, we mentioned the Python 2, Python 3 compatibility stuff, but then the key at the bottom, the thing that people are going to probably have their eyes fall on first, is make sure you have pip 9.0.1 or greater, um, because then you won't ever see this error message. Um, similarly, in your dunder init, you want to keep that Python 2 compatible, um, because people are clever, and they work off of master, and say they're installing uh, in an editable install, and then they pull the latest version of your library. Well now you have an incompatible version of your library on their Python 2 system. So in that case, you need to catch something in Dunder init, and so you just check the version info, add an import error. Now in this case, you don't need them to update pip because they weren't really using pip. That wasn't the problem here because they just pulled down the new um, version. Um, so you just need to tell them that it is uh, Python 2 incompatible. Uh, so how did this go for us? Um, uh, the upper graph is Pyth IPython 5, uh, the downloads off of PyPI. The lower graph is uh, downloads of IPython 6. Um, the blue and cyan are Python 2 uh, downloads. The orange are Python 3 downloads um, with PIP 9. Uh, as you can see in the IPython 5 case, uh, Python 2 downloads, uh, if you're using PIP 9, uh, that's the distinction between the blue and the cyan, whether it's PIP 9 or PIP 8. Um, 
they've gone on un uninterrupted. Uh, on the other hand, for people who were using pip8, you can see immediately after that dotted line, the vertical line there is when we released IPython 6.0, uh, well, we had a spike of people trying to get the latest version of IPython, uh, and they didn't upgrade pip, and as a result, you see many more downloads there. However, within a week, it basically leveled out, and now we're getting almost nothing. So it seems that most of our users, if they are Python 2 users, actually did read the error message, and they upgraded pip because they are awesome. Uh, so, um, and as you can see now, the uh, Python 3 has, uh, or sorry, the uh, IPython 6 and Python 3 has had no problems whatsoever, just maintaining a steady pace. Um, so we've had two kinds of bug reports and complaints uh, during the, uh, 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 during the RC period, uh, people were using, uh, particularly in CI systems, uh, Python set of .py install. And because that doesn't respect uh, the requires Python information, they got it on Python, they got 6.0 on Python 2, which is going to break because we told you it was going to break because that's what the problem, like this is why, please don't use Python set of .py. <laughs> um, uh, and then our second error message, w uh, which more or less said, my bad, I thought the pip upgrade error message was irrelevant. When I upgrade pip, it works. Um, uh, so please, everyone, upgrade pip too. Um, so some quick conclusions over all of the various things that have been going on. Uh, in terms of IPython specifically, uh, IPython 6.4, uh, going forward, IPython is going to be Python 3 only, at least the 6 version. We're still updating the IPython 5.x, uh, Python 2 uh, long-term support branch. Um, and our transition has gone relatively well, as those graphs indicate. Um, we've got, uh, people have stopped uh, downloading incompatible versions, um, which is exactly what we wanted to see. Uh, they are successfully able to get the compatible versions uh, that allow them to continue to have delightful projects, whatever those happen to be. And honestly, we've been trying to forge this path now so that all of you uh, with your libraries can move ahead even more easily, and it should only continue to get easier. Um, and then in terms of converting your packages to Python 3 only, uh, the sort of general idea, just use packaging tools that respect requires Python information. It's, it's in a pep, it's followed now by all of the standard uh, procedures, so uh, actually take that into account and use requires Python in your set of .pys. Um, and additionally, encourage everyone everywhere, uh, just tell them to upgrade pip. If you can upgrade pip, do it, because otherwise you're going to run into these kind of problems. Uh, if you're going to be releasing this kind of a thing, follow these defensive packaging practices um, that I briefly overviewed. Um, and then if you really want to, you can read and contribute to the Python 3 statement, because if you want to move your package to Python 3 only, you are uh, seemingly uh, interested in the sorts of things that the Python 3 statement uh, supports. Uh, maybe your scientific Python package, maybe you're not, but regardless, uh, the practicalities will matter to you and it'll matter to us because you'll learn things that you'll be able to contribute back. Um, and with that, I just want to say thanks. Uh, remind everyone that uh, people from the Python 3 world, oh, oh, sorry, uh, that might not be as easily legible um, uh, for Python 2 users, um, uh, that, that's a heart. Uh, we love you uh, and uh, we don't want to hurt you or break any of your things. Uh, you can get our slides there, and uh, I think with that, we will take questions. Hi. Any questions? I have a question. Um, you said a lot of people put work in several different projects. How did you get everyone to do that? How long, you know, how long was that process? You've been doing it for much longer than I. Uh, so we, we, we know each other and we're famous when we say we ask people to migrate to Python 3, they do. Uh, no, just <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, um, I mean, we, we actually reach to people for, we've been reaching to people for a really long time. We go and see some libraries and say, hey, uh, you're awesome people, you're working in open source, you're spending a lot of time to, um, to help Python users. Uh, there is this solution. Are you, uh, are you willing to, to, to do that now? And say no, I'm not. They say no, not now. We can't. We can't even bring the discussion to to the mailing list uh, of our project. But we did that more than a year ago, and uh, the ideas are uh, making their way into people uh, people's heads. 
And now you have people that were completely against doing that, that are, well, maybe it's a good solution. I have seen people doing that. And by reaching directly to people, by, by, by one, by saying, we did that for you, do you want to do that? It does work, and that's why we're doing it here. We are a big project, we are, we are right by town, we have a lot of users. Uh, a lot of people are afraid to do it because nobody did it before. And by telling them, hey, we've done that before you, it's okay, it works. They listen way better than if you just say you should do that. If you say, I've done it. Uh, and we go into project, we help them, we say, here, the pull request is only five line, it works. And if you reach the right people, they say, well, it's a good idea, and I've seen that Matplotlib is going to do it. And it's true, 2020 is only in two years, two years and a half, and they just say yes, and they come, they, they come by. And you really have to just talk to people at conferences, uh, go to meetups, talk to them, and, and exchange it by mail. Don't just send something to the wild on, on, on Twitter, and it works really great. People are, uh, single people are receptive. Crowds tend to uh, be afraid and go against the movement. Uh, but if you talk to a maintainer, the maintainer will usually be, yes, it's a good idea. I will bring that with my users and the other developers when it's the right time. And often the discussion will really re go really well. Hi, great talk. Okay, um, I'll go. Um, just just to check quickly. So your recommendation to use pip instead of uh, Python setup.py is that just for installation? Because setup tools does other things like building native extensions and so on. Yes, it's uh, mostly in your documentation when you tell users how to upgrade packages and how to install packages. Um, there is a difference between Python setup.py install or Python setup.py develop and pip install dot or pip install minus e dot. Pip does a lot of things for you behind the scene. It passes a lot of flags, it sets up a lot of things. Um, and the other things you've seen the pyproject.toml uh, mention is that some people want to install their package or build their package with a tool which is not setup tools. And by having a single message, hey, the way to install a package is pip install the package name when uh, the package name is, uh, is on PyPI. Uh, and saying when it's a local package, do pip install dot. Then you give a single message to the Python community, this is how to install a package. And then you, you, you break this 10,000 way of installing things that confuse users and make users believe that Python 2 versus Python 3 or Python packaging is hard. One of the things that we were going to say at the beginning is a lot of speakers are avoiding to speak about controversial subjects. We choose to speak about two, Python, versus, Python 2 versus Python 3 and packaging at the same time. And we probably managed to do it in this talk. Without angering anyone, it seems. Hopefully. Uh, hi. Uh, so first, thank you guys for uh, leading this charge. Uh, may not have injured anyone. Have you helped anyone? So uh, have you seen any movement of users from Python 2 to Python 3 in order to get the new features in IPython 6? Do you have any evidence or have you done any sort of quantification of downloads? Are you seeing any shift because of this action? We've, we're probably in a really biased community. We have a really small view. A lot of people are excited. Yeah. Um, and we can share notebooks that give the graphs. We probably should have released IPython 6 and IPython 5.4 at the same time. Because then we could have actually tested which of the things is actually being upgraded versus just installed uh, that has been pinned or something like that. Um, but in terms of particular users with particular use cases for Python, IPython 6 and upgrading to Python 3 for that purpose, I. I think we would need to do more user research to be able to answer that. But you know, open source uh, projects and user research without doing like extensive telemetrics is always somewhat hard. Thank you. Uh, I, I didn't see Django on your Python free statement. Did you try to reach them? Um, so we, it's, it's been unclear to me if Django is actually stopping Python support before 2020. We are, we are fine changing the Python 2 statements. Uh, at first, we focused it on research projects, mostly like, uh, Specifically scientific Python research projects. Um, just, just to get a stronger message as a first, as a first pass. When you come to the, I mean, we started that because we didn't knew at the time that Django would drop Python 2 support. 
if we have non, and the, the phrasing is really research-based if you look at the Python 3 statement. If non-research project like Django wants to join, we are happy to change the phrasing and we will be really happy to have them on the page. The main uh, point of this page is if you're wondering whether your project is going to drop Python 2 support uh, or you want to, want, want to have a nice timeline of uh, plain support, please come and uh, ask your things to this page and then users will know that they have to go to this page, and if they want to convince their manager that they need to drop, uh, to migrate to Python 3 because Django is going away, then they can come here. And we'll be really happy to get the Django maintainer and talk with them. Uh, thanks very much for this. So um, I was wondering if there's a written version of this that sort of lays out the best practices, um, since there are so many contingencies. The Python 3 statement. Uh, oh, it has a practicality has section uh, that Great. will describe. So Python 3 statement website, uh, completely on GitHub, you can contribute. You have the nice projects that are participating with logo, without logo, the nice timeline. And if you go at the bottom, you have practicalities. We're bad at CSS. Uh, we're Python programmers, right? Uh, practicality by page has all we said here about how to do stuff, why, um, and so much more. And so much more. Awesome. Um, Thank we, you. We have only so much time per day, so if you want to add stuff, feel free to send pull requests. Yes, we're very happy to take contributions. And, and if you send a pull request and you say, hey, can I have commit right, we will probably say yes and give you commit right. I think that's it for questions. So thank you all for being a wonderful audience. <laughs> Projects that have already uh, signed up. Um, if you see any of those, it means that by 2023, they will have dropped support for Python 2. Uh, and we have nice timelines. Uh, green is Python 2 compatible, blue is Python 3 only. Um, and what you can see, the red line is um, today, we are getting closer and closer to 2020 when it's end of life of Python 2. Um, and you see that more and more projects are moving toward Python 3 only. This is why we uh, focus this talk on the um, uh, stopping Python 2 um, compatibility. So why we started this project? It was mostly to scratch our own itch. Um, we wanted to release like Python 6. Really want to write Python 3 only because we, have, we are academics and we spend a lot of time uh, maintaining Python 2. Uh, and we care about our Python 2 users. And what we want to do is if a user just use as usual the, num the command pip install ipython or even upgrade, it should install the latest version of ipython which is compatible uh, and not ipython 6 which would be Python 3 only. Uh, but the problem is that in uh, 2016, if you were to do that, uh, basically someone do pip install like Python upgrade to how we uh, did that uh, for the past uh, one, um, one year. Python 2, 2 versus Python 3 is an example. Uh, there are a lot of uh, lessons to learn from this talk. If you're dropping support for 3.3 and going 3.4 only, this talk apply to you. If you're already a package which is Python 2 only, and want to have less frustration for Python 3 users when they try to install your package and it's just blow up in uh, their terminal, this talk is also for you. Same thing if you're 2.6 and above and you want to drop 2.6 and not break for users, uh, the information that are here are uh, for you as well. Um, if you want to find more information about that, you can go on the python3statement.org website that we maintain and we welcome your contribution. Uh, it's basically a list of all uh, uh, packages that uh, are stopping Python 2 support before 2020 and want to warn users and tell users how um, it will affect them and give as much information. And if you're a developer, it will also tell you um, how you can prepare your package to make the transitions uh, as least frustrating as possible for your users. So we have a bunch of products, almost anything, as long as it helps move science forward. And uh, one of those things is actually bridging the, uh, the gap between uh, Python 2 and Python 3 to make uh, science, uh, science package easy to install and so on and so forth. Uh, and just one small slide, we have JupyterCon in August uh, in New York. If you want to come, um, we will be there. Uh, you can go to jupyterCon.com to have more information. So what this talk is not about, uh, is Python 3 or is Python 2 the right choice? Uh, we are not going to decide here, the choice you make is yours, it's the right one. Uh, should you migrate to Python 3 only, again, it's your choice. Uh, we have our own thoughts about that. If you want to talk about to us about whether you should do it or not, come and see us. But we're not going to talk about that in, um, in this talk. 
What this talk is about is how we migrated IPython to Python 3 only. And one of the things we really cared about was all our users, whether they're on Python 3 or Python 2 alike. Um, we want to make the transition as least frustrating for users and for devs. And uh, we're going to um, narrate it assuming IPython 6 is online. Uh, the users read something like installing IPython, doing some magic success, and then they do Python, import IPython, and then they, they have a huge stack trace that they basically read as syntax running error, error, I don't like you. Uh, that's basically how I read things when I'm a, I'm a user that don't know about a package. Um, and so we, don't, we want absolutely to avoid this. We want um, to have a, the best experience possible. So let's roll back to 2016, and we thought, what are the solutions that are available um, to us? What can we do? Uh, there are, we scratch our heads for quite some time and come with not really solutions. Um, just tell all your users that are on Python 2 to pip install IPython lower than 6. Um, but then you have to teach them that they have to put quotes. They have to remember when they're on Python 3 environment not to do that. They have to remember when they're on Python 2 environment to do it correctly. They have to remember which version, etc., and, and so on and so forth. It's not the best solution. So we keep, keep searching. Um, moreover, users do not always read the All right, good afternoon. Um, today's talk, uh, we're going to have two speakers. Um, they're going to go by M&M. &M. Uh, actually, one of them is Matthias. You'll have to figure out which one that is. Um, they come from uh, BIDS, which is the Berkeley Institute of? Data Science. Data Science, OK. Um, and the talk is uh, building bridges, not walls. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for <laughs> thank you for being here today and caring both about Python 2 and Python 3 and how we can uh, build bridges between the two um, two community. And thank you for the organizers for this uh, beautiful venue, and also for having uh, live captioning. Um, so uh, a bit about us, uh, we've been working for IPython respectively for and Jupyter Project for respectively five and, and, and one year. Uh, you can find us on um, GitHub and on, um, on Twitter. Uh, we have the chance to work at uh, bids that let us uh, spend uh, our time working